If you're like me, you've gotten really tired of eating freeze-dried or dehydrated foods over and over again on backpacking trips. Well, this backpacking trip is gonna be different. I am not taking a single freeze-dried thing with me, and I wanna show you how you can eat well, eat real food while on a backpacking trip. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down stuff you can get at the grocery store and how to make a culinary experience in the backcountry. Let's get after it. Uh, this is my van. Uh, you may have seen it in some other videos. My lovely girlfriend, uh, Christy, is going to be camera woman here. Kovu is uh, very excited to be grip, key grip, and sound dog uh, here on the video. But uh, inside, ooh, it is really hot here. I'm in Montana, and it is so much hotter than I expected uh, for backpacking not too far away from Glacier National Park. So this is crazy here. I have bought food for real cooking on this trip. Now, uh, some things are not going to be cooking, but it is very, very important. Kobo. Cool. Uh... So for the first meal, I think tonight I'm going to be making a pad thai. Um, so what that's going to actually look like is rice noodles with a bunch of fresh veggies. So we've got an orange pepper, some Adele's sausage, we're gonna be chopping up some broccoli here, sweet potato, and of course, onion and garlic. These sun-dried tomatoes are what's really gonna bring this meal home. And it's something that I really, really like adding in. I don't carry this glass jar. And then also for oils, I'm going to be scooping in some coconut oil. Again, avoiding carrying out glass. So for the second meal, we've got Annie's mac and cheese. Then we're going to uh, fancy up. Fancy Mac. Fancy Mac, which is truly, I think, the most satisfying meal that I know how to make in the backcountry. I really, really love it's it. It's so good. So good. So uh, with that, we got more of these Adele sausages. And I get a lot of questions about these Adele sausages because it's meat and you're going backpacking with meat. Now these are pre-cooked and while they say keep refrigerated, it's true, you should keep them refrigerated, but you can get away, depending on air temperature, with easily two days, uh, and depending on the conditions, three, and I've backpacked with them for four days as well, in non-really hot scenarios, and they've been totally fine. Now, day four does get a little bit on the edge, but two days, three days, you're gonna be golden with these pre-cooked sausages if you eat meat and things like that. So it's a really great way to add in protein into your trip. Obviously, this is going to be a terrible way to haul everything into the backcountry. So before I even go backpacking, I'm going to be chopping and dicing and prepping this first meal. <clears throat> so I've got reusable containers and I've got these big storage Ziplocs that I'm going to probably put a lot of these vegetables in. So. I did forget a couple ingredients because I pulled them out of the fridge when I wasn't looking at them. Shiitake mushrooms. That's going to be so, so good. And oh, just for shiitake mushrooms. I only forgot the one. One of the things that's really important, aside from cutting up your vegetables, is just getting rid of all of this packaging. So don't actually go backpacking with these boxes because it's just a silly waste of time. Break stuff down into their more compactable compressible packaging. <clears throat> oh, I did forget one other thing. I didn't mention that this is going to be the flavor pack for my pad thai, uh, which is actually a butter curry. So maybe I lied. It's not actually pad thai. It's a, a chicken curry. I'm sorry, everybody. Can you forgive me? We'll work on rebuilding trust. As an aside, just a tip for when you're packing for your backpacking trip, that you don't necessarily, I don't necessarily pack with everything in its packaging from the grocery store. I can save some weight, or if I need to portion it out, uh, then it makes it really easy to be like morning one, morning two, or something like that. Uh, and that way I don't overeat or mostly overeat. Cut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up my onions, my broccoli, my sweet potato, the shiitake mushrooms, the peppers, all the things that I'm taking, and I'm going to portion them out into two different Ziplocs, one for each meal, which is gonna make the food prep in the backcountry ultra easy. <laughs> Hi 
the kit. I've got my two meal bags prepped. This one is really veggie heavy. This might even be borderline too much food, but uh, we're two growing people. We're okay and a, with it. And a dog. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna feast, and then we have a slightly more trimmed down version over here. This is actually for day two. So we're gonna eat this on the first night and get that weight out of the way. But here I have the makings of a pretty stellar backcountry meal. And if you're curious about how this will actually be prepared, we'll stick around because we're gonna go backpacking and we're gonna make these for the next two nights in the backcountry. All right, let's go. So we had big plans of making this really sexy cooking montage, having great light coming in. And it took us until uh, about 8.15 to get into camp. So that being said, we're probably gonna have to do a bit of this cooking in the dark. So this is like a lot of food. We, we made a ton of veggies. Awesome. Woo. Oh, I can smell it. That looks good. So this is our camp food tonight. That looks pretty much a lot better than a dehydrated meal. Also, this has been in my vein of the Jet Boil Challenge. Uh, I made a video not too long ago about how I was ditching the Jet Boil, uh, mostly because I was developing bad habits about my cooking. And I wasn't cooking real food like this and I hadn't done this for a long time. So I made that video and a lot of people have been challenging me to use this system. So I'm using their Minimo, pot and uh, their skillet here and together that's gonna allow me to cook some real food. So that's what I'm doing here tonight. Got the sizzling away. You can temperature control it and uh, that's gonna make it real nice. So I got this pot resting now. Uh, this is gonna just hang out for a few minutes. And over here I've got the Jet Boil Mini Mo going for boiling up water. Which will then contain my rice noodles. And uh, once these, this is boiling, I'm gonna soak these and then I'm gonna resume the cooking of all the veggies. Behind me, while I'm cooking, it's time to serve it up. Bon appetit. Well, folks, that's my take on the pad thai. It's a little bit different. This is more like a curry. Um, but stick around for meal two, in which we make Fancy Mac tomorrow. And it is fancy, and it is my favorite. So cut to meal number two, starting right now. Welcome to day two of the trek. Tonight, I'm going to be preparing Fancy Mac and Cheese. Honestly, this has been my favorite meal and my longest standing traditional meal to make in the backcountry, And I love it because it's so easy and it just tastes delicious. So what I have here, you saw me prepping some of the stuff in the van, but I have my two boxes of mac and cheese. I've got the uh, powder that is the cheese itself. And normally I actually do like to bring with me powdered milk to help make it creamy. Uh, it's a great substitute for butter and for just liquid milk. Uh, but I ran out uh, of powdered milk on my last backpacking trip. So I've got a little trick up my sleeve uh, that I'm going to add in. One, we have the coconut oil. That's gonna provide some of that kind of buttery creaminess. Then we also have the sun-dried tomatoes and the oil from the sun-dried tomatoes. That is gonna really help make it uh, oily and creamy and nice. But the thing to give it that nice creamy punch is I brought some cream cheese. And uh, this has, you know, it's day two of the trek. It's been hot, the cream cheese is still good. And I think it's going to really bring home that nice creaminess that you want with mac and cheese. However, if you don't wanna pack any of these things, it's totally okay and I do it all the time, to just not use anything other than what comes in these packets. And then I just will leave a little bit of extra water in the pot and then that creates a suitable uh, alternative to that creamy cheesiness that you're used to with mac and cheese. Okay, let's fire up some of these uh, goodies on the skillet. Let's get this baby going. While this starts to cook, I'm gonna work on getting all those extra goodies out. 
but uh, I've got this nice glob of coconut oil in there and all the veggies are looking good, smelling good. That meat has had no problem with being out here. So let's fire it up and let's start cooking. So bringing a skillet out has actually been something that I used to do. I used to cook on a skillet all the time when I was guiding. And I've definitely kind of gotten away from cooking with a pot and a skillet. But if you have the combo, it's pretty potent because you can cook so much food, even out here in the backcountry. <clears throat> so obviously the biggest concern with cooking like this is the added weight. Uh, so let's address that. It is quite a bit heavier cooking food like this than doing the freeze dried meals. But one, it's a lot more satisfying. And two, I think that uh, one of the tactics I like to use is to bring real food like this for at least the first night of a backpacking trip. <clears throat> um, you cook it right off the bat, and then you can save your lighter meals for later in your backpacking trip. This is day two, we're doing a three day trip, two night trip, and uh, we just felt like, you know, we wanted to eat really good food. And that's kind of the beauty of doing backpacking trips, especially when we're not going super, super far. So this was a hard hike to get here, but it wasn't, it took us about three and a half hours. And so now to be able to enjoy some really wonderful food, it's totally worth it. Okay, everything is looking really good. Uh, these sausages have got a nice caramelizing going on. These shiitake mushrooms look perfect. I am really excited about this, so I'm gonna set this aside and then turn this off. The beauty of having a skillet and a pot, I can do my noodles or whatever, rice if I'm cooking that, separately in the pot. Well, I've got all my veggies and my fixins over here. So the only thing, the biggest trick is simply taking this guy off after it's been really hot. Okay, we're boiling away. Just gonna add these mac noodles in here. By keeping some of this water, I can adjust the amount of creaminess or liquidity that there is in our pot. Okay, because I'm making two portions, it's starting to get into a little bit of a tricky situation with space. Okay, my friends, I am super psyched about how this one turned out. It looks amazing. And uh, this is true fancy mac and cheese. But this is backcountry cooking. And if you wanna try a meal like this, I highly recommend it. Also, hot tip, Chef Corso is a good friend of mine and he's actually doing, doing so much with backcountry cooking. So if you wanna step up your food game, make sure that you check out Chef Corso. There'll be a link over here or over here somewhere. I'm gonna wrap this up because I wanna eat this. It's time to eat. We're wrapping up our three day adventure here and I hope that you enjoyed this video and find some inspiration in this food. Would you try this out? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Which one of the two meals is gonna be, looks the best for you? And uh, try them both out, I'd love to hear your feedback. If you like this video, please give it that thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed here at Backpacking TV. I'm Eric Hansen with my lovely helper, Christy. We're gonna go enjoy this fine mac and cheese. See you later, everybody.